Hey guys, John G. Adams, Modern Design Aquascaping. I'm back again with part five of my water feature design series. I'm getting ready to blaze a trail out to meet with Charlie Ross and his team at Virginia Water Gardens, and we are going to install some external pumps on his water feature that he's installing. So if you guys ever thought about doing a rec pond or a swim pond, you need to know how to install your external pumps properly. You should watch this video. You might learn something. And by the way, little carrot for you. This is the space where I shoot all of my fountain videos right here. If you've seen any of those, look what I've done. Something awesome is getting ready to happen at Grumpy's Splash Pad. So uh, I'm out. I'll get back with you from Virginia. Well, it's my last day with Virginia Water Gardens and I want to spend a little time with you talking about this vault that we built for the pumps on this recreational pond because I think it's very important everybody understands what it takes to put pumps into a rec pond properly and this is a nice tight installation. Unfortunately, I don't have the second pump, but I have enough done now that I can show you guys <laughs> some trees, logs falling from trees. I have enough done that I can show you guys what it takes. I can show you the time lapse of this thing getting built so that you know how to properly install your pumps for your next recreational swim pond. So check it out guys. Let's look down here and see what we've got. First thing you're gonna see is that we have gravel in the bottom of here. When we dug the hole for this vault, we over dug it by about eight inches. We put corrugated pipe through the bottom down there. And then uh, what happened after that was we hooked it to some solid pipe right here and we ran it gravity feed out to daylight. Then we filled over top of that pipe with about eight inches of crushed stone. So guys, you might be asking yourself, do I really need all of this gravel in the bottom of the hole? My answer, yes you do. Two purposes for that gravel, number one, it gives you a nice flat level base in order to build your vault on top of. Number two, you need to get water out. You need to have superb drainage in the bottom of that hole in case something goes wrong with your plumbing or if you screw up and let a ton of water in. Your pumps are external pumps. They're not meant to get wet. You don't put submersible pumps on a recreational pond and you don't put external pumps underwater. You need the gravel, just saying. We then use a piece of three quarter inch treated plywood as a platform for each pump. And we used a piece of thick rubber on top of that. The rubber is screwed to the plywood. The pump is screwed to the rubber. That is for noise dampening. That'll keep your vibration to an absolute minimum. Gives it a nice clean appearance. Everything's perfect down in here and tidy. And you can see right in here, what I've done is I've overcut these holes. Now that is not accidental. What we want to do on these is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to spray black foam around the outside of here and that's going to give me a vibration protection for my, my plumbing because what I don't want is I don't want pipes vibrating against the wood over time and causing these situations where I have holes wearing through the pipes from vibration. That gives us a little room for movement. So everything's nice, pretty level. We use treated 4x4 four four lumber for the construction. Um, pretty basic. I want to point out that with the second pump, we'll have the valves also pointing towards the center, and we're going to mount it pretty tight right against this wall. And what the reason for that is, you can see on each pump, there's a union on these particular pumps, and if you don't have unions on your pumps, you need to make sure that you put some on there, because what you want is you want the center of here to give you the opportunity to unscrew these two unions and slide the pump in. You gotta have enough room in the middle to slide this one in or to slide this one in so you can undo the unions, remove a pump for service, repair, replacement, whatever happens in the course of time. You never wanna have to get in here and cut any plumbing to move a pump out. So you got space to get in and work, you got space to remove a pump. Everything's nice and easy peasy. Here we've got another pipe that runs out. This one is basically just a sleeve for us to bring power from our from our power source right here in. And then also we're gonna have an inch and a half pipe that comes out here that's a breather. This will also be tightened up with some foam and sealed up so that that's uh, nice and tidy over there. We've got water coming into your pump from your basin. So you guys need to know, I'm just gonna show you this diagram that I've drawn up for how you feed. You're either gonna be drawing your water in from a basin 
you're going to be drawing your water in from an intake bay, a negative edge, a skimmer box, some sort of inlet that you're pulling your water through, you need to make sure that you follow your pump's specifications on how much it can auto prime. I'm going to use swing check valves down low in my basin so that once this thing is primed, everything's going to be easy peasy because when the power goes out, the water's going to stay static. It's not going to backflow out of the lines. I'm not going to have an issue with that. And then you remember also when I need to open the basket, this pump's got a service basket right here. You can close my ball valves, both of these off. And when you take the lid off the basket, you're just going to lose the little bit of water that's in the line. It's going to drain right out, no problem. Everything's cool with that because of the drainage that we have underneath. That allows you to periodically clean the basket that you have going on with your pump. So guys, that's, that's pretty much all we have. We're drawing in from the basin into that one. This three inch line goes out all the way back up to the top. This is what you're looking at. This will have a lid over top of it to cover it. It's in the ground, it's quiet. We're gonna have, I'm gonna show you right here, we're gonna have this negative edge waterfall right here. That guy right there is gonna block the sound from the porch, from the house, from all the viewing areas because the noise, the noise from the pumps is on this side over here by me. And then you've got a waterfall over there in between the people and the pumps. So whatever little bit of noise vibration that we have left that we haven't covered up by hiding these pumps is gonna be disguised by the waterfall that's in between the pumps and the house. So that's how you wanna situate that stuff. Don't put them right over there where you gotta to listen to them. We have installed this thing optimally so that it's going to have a long lifespan and operate just the way it needs to, guys. That's all I got to say about this pump. Do me a favor. If you learn something about pump installation, you feel happy about this, it makes you all warm and fuzzy inside, give me a thumbs up. Tell me this video was valuable. Subscribe to our channel and you will continue learning about all the awesome water feature stuff that I have crammed in this cranium of mine. I will share it with you and some cool water feature projects too. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome day.